What's going on, everybody? Hello, everyone. Holy shit. For those of you listening and not watching. It's probably a little louder for you. You went close magic. Yeah, you know, up close and personal, saying hello to everybody. Like they're face to face with us. Um, first of all, we are in uh, Louisville right now. I'm Louisville. in town for a um, a private party, uh, which should be a ton of fun. Um, first of all, I just want to say how much fun we've been having. I'm Josh, by the way. Yeah, I think they do know who we are. This is Josh. This is Pops. And I'm Jacob. Yeah, this is Hey Man. Does this look unfocused to you? It, every time we move, it looks get a little unfocused. And the angle's a little off. So, like. There you go. You have to be back. You're too close. Okay. So, like, yeah, you have to stay leaning back. Uh, I can't move? That's difficult. No, me. just don't do not do this. Yeah, but I'm trying to help the audio. It probably doesn't help the video when we're at different levels, right? Right. It's trying to focus on one too many things. Right. But also the audio. We both talk really loud. We're in a room right now with pretty good acoustics. I think they're going to be able to hear us. Okay. Anyways, guys, let me just say we're, we're psyched to be back. Um, we've really uh, – we miss doing this. And like I said, the new studio will be in Vegas in May uh, when Jacob moves there. But in the meantime, we'll be doing um, – one of these from a uh, hotel room. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, also, please remember, wherever you watch this or listen, but, you know, on iTunes and especially, it helps so much if you can rate and subscribe and leave a comment. YouTube, too, if you can leave a comment. Um, and I get on there, and I, I hope you see that I get on there, and I'm commenting back with people. Um, so, but that means a lot to us. If you can possibly do that, especially on iTunes, when we move up the charts, um, you get more eyeballs and more eyeballs means, um, sponsors and things like that. And, uh, just less like, honestly, my goal is for this podcast to get kind of big so I can do less. I can do less. I don't have to do four weeks on the road every month. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I'd love to spend a little more time at this point in my life, you know, with your mom. and. Yeah, I've only been doing this for two months, and I already want to spend more time with my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, man. So a bigger – look, here's what beautiful thing, and I want to say this with all sincerity to those of you who are watching and listening. Yo, man, the groundswell for my com comedy tour that we're doing – and the tickets, like last night, no more tickets left in Lexington. You know, private party tonight. Tomorrow night in Baltimore, no more tickets left. We already sold out Winnipeg, and um, tickets in Austin are going crazy. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to know how much I appreciate it. Guys, but it's not off of some giant podcast. You all are comedy fans. You found me from comedy clips. Mm -hmm. And that's why the crowds have been so – fucking crazy good but they're I just, yeah they're there for comedy i just want to thank you and so down right download rate subscribe uh uh comedian josh wolf.com for tour dates i'm just looking at our hoodies right now yeah that's uh for those of you who don't know that is my dog his name is milo so just for those of you listening he's pointing at my hoodie right now that is a picture of my dog um, and my dog is a Chihuahua Corgi. He's a little aggressive. He's been biting me for the last week and for the whole time we've had him. So we decided to Photoshop, or my girlfriend did, decided to Photoshop a Glock into the picture of this. Because this is like when we first, one of the first pictures we have of him. And so she's laying there on my bed looking all cute with a little snaggle tooth. And then my girlfriend was like, I'm just going to give him a Glock. I gave him a Glock, and then she printed a couple hoodies for Christmas for some friends. Um, but we've been getting a lot. He says he gets a lot of questions about it. So when he's it, he, not the dog, me. Correct. Yeah, that's. I felt like that was implied. No, because we've been talking about the dog the whole time. Yeah, but how would the dog get questions about the hoodie that he's on? Yeah, I don't know, but I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> they don't think clarification was needed, but. <laughs> but either way, it's a great hoodie. It's my dog with a Glock. And I do. Just, it just matches. Like, this is the perfect epitome picture of a Chihuahua. I, I, I get more questions. And honestly, it's so funny we're wearing these two hoodies. Because you're wearing the new I Like Weird Shit hoodies. It's true. In the past, there's no short shirt or hoodie that I have ever worn where I get more comments than I'm wearing, I'm wearing an I Like Weird Shit shirt. 
But this has surpassed it. The one with your dog. Has yeah, surpassed. it's the, it looks like just something like a like a meme that you saw somewhere that somebody just like that like the portraits were just mass printed on the internet. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, this is so dumb. Yeah, it's pretty funny. There's only like seven of them in existence, which is even better. I'm so happy that I have one. They're pretty cool. Um. Anyways, we uh. This is is this our first three city three day? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Three three cities in three days. So we did Lexington last night. We drove up to Louisville today, and we are flying out to Baltimore tomorrow. But we did that in kind of in Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, but we need to take a plane. I mean, sure, I guess, but you know, we we should talk about New Zealand. I mean, we're only two, we're only two months late, but we should instead of doing like one city per podcast, we should just give a kind of a. First of all, New Zealand was – I love that country. Yeah, it's cool. I, I really enjoyed it as well. The The first night we were in um, Auckland, mm -hmm. and um, we did a uh, little theater there. I went and bought – yo, that was the place that I bought that baggy kind of suit-looking thing. Yeah, it is where you bought that. That was uh, – we did it on our last day. Yeah. Because we, we were – Driving to Taronga the day after, correct? Or like that Taronga. I can't roll my arse. Taronga. So. Taronga. I, the Auckland, I love, man. That's where he, by the way, he, so if you guys have heard my story about jumping off that needle in, in Auckland and it taking 37 minutes and them having to push me. Yeah, it took me 37 seconds and I jumped. Dude, he jumped. I thought, listen, I'm, here, here's what I thought was going to happen. Okay? Okay. I knew you were going to jump. But you did seem nervous walking up. And the day before, you seemed a little bit nervous. Day before, I definitely seemed a little more nervous than I thought I was going to. And I pushed it to the other, to the next day. And yeah. I was like, yeah. But I pushed it so I could get my mind right because I was like, I have to do it. There's no way I can back out or say, no, nah, we don't have time. Like, we have to make it happen. And we did. When you put – because when you pushed it, I was like, oh, he's – and I have to – here's the thing. Okay. So I, I think that you have more courage – when it comes to that kind of stuff, for sure, than I do. Probably. And uh, definitely, you proved it just by jumping, the way you jumped off that. That's true. Okay, so I think you have more courage. So, but then the day before, when you were like, mm, let's push it, I was like, oh, he might fucking bail on yeah. this. So that's when I started to really give you shit, because I thought, as much of a pussy as I was. You did it. At least it happened. Yeah, I wanted to give you false hope. No, that, you were nervous. You, that yeah, day I, I you were nervous that day. I had before. to give you some false hope so you go, oh, maybe I'll have something over him. Nah. Just so, well, look, false hope. You weren't nervous? Oh, I was definitely nervous. I was nervous when I got up there, too. But I had to give you some sort of false hope because how I landed was the best way. It was, uh, was just so me to prove the point that I was nervous, but at the same time, I wasn't. You, he landed, guys, eyeballing me the whole way in, like a superhero. Superman, in the Superman superhero pose. I was, I was like, fist in the ground. Should have landed like Spider Man. Yo, did you see the um, the Black Widow, the one with his sister, and the no, you didn't. No, the one with Hopper from Stranger Things. You didn't see that the one with the big Russian guy. No, yeah. I saw it. Why not? I don't know. I heard it was terrible. Who told you that? A lot of people. I heard it didn't do great online either. Like all the reviews for it weren't me. Yo, first of all. Scarlett Johansson, no brainer. The woman, and I don't remember anybody's names. The woman who played Scarlett Johansson's sister mm -hmm. might have, and I, you know how I'm a huge Scarlett Johansson fan. She might have stolen the movie from her. It, she was so good. And then Hopper from Stranger Things? Yeah, he was just some giant Russian guy. Come on, man. Red Guardian or whatever he was. It was great. It was great. Now, I will say, as far as superheroes. None of them had powers. Red Guardian does. But, like, Black Widow. Does he? Yeah, he's got super strength. Black Widow, like, I've always thought that her and Hawkeye were the worst superheroes. Yeah, you know, like you know, like in the Avengers, that first one where 
the aliens are coming down, and Hulk's there, and Thor's spinning his fucking yeah. And then you just see Black Widow. So Thor spinning his and hammer and fucking with Iron Man and Cap, and Cap with his and then Black Widow takes out a pistol. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. At least Hawkeye yeah, for me, yeah. like Hawkeye, I'm gonna choose over Black Widow. Because Hawkeye at least has different types of arrows. He has explosive arrows. He has regular arrows. He has electric arrows. He has tripwire arrows. He's got a lot of different arrows for a lot of different scenarios. Black Widow just spins and kicks. Yeah, but I think fist fight, Black Widow beats up Hawkeye. Yeah, you could say that. And they tried to do a fist fight to see who would sacrifice themselves. And she won. Yeah, I guess she did win. She won. She won. won. Okay, so... Let me ask you this before we go on to anything more in New Zealand. What do you think is the most DC or Marvel most underrated superhero movie? Well, look, there's no underrated DC movies because all of them suck dick. I disagree. Other than the Dark Knight trilogy. I thought Wonder Woman was real good. I thought Batman versus Superman was underrated. Terrible. Okay. Terrible. Okay. But I don't any, think it's any the of most. The, any of the Superman movies? Terrible. I have not enjoyed any All of them. Man Reeves. of Steel was quite possibly one of the worst movies I've ever seen. They, they just haven't figured out how to do – it's so crazy that they can't figure out how to do a Superman movie. I just think the writing's terrible. I think the writing's terrible. I think the acting's bad. It looks bad. Like I just think it's not a good movie all the way around. Yeah, but how could you not make a good movie about Super? Now, the only thing I can think of is that he's the only one who's not really – Here's, it's difficult to write a movie about somebody who's not flawed. We like our people and our heroes to be flawed now. And he's but a, Superman is flawed. He is, he is an extraterrestrial being who then finds love in some random woman. And his, he's not perfect. He's also not immune to kryptonite, which is – Yeah, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, like just everyone has a weakness. Person. But he's like like Bruce Wayne is flawed. He's a flawed human. Um, Tony Stark is a flawed human. Black Widow, they, uh, 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 Hawkeye, they all the They're Hulk. Captain America. Yeah, he does. He's not real flawed. And all of those movies are good. Yeah, that's true. Winter Soldier is the best Captain America movie, hands down. Okay, it's not close with Bucky. Tell me the most underrated superhero movie of all time. I don't mind this. I don't know if I have an underrated superhero movie. I think your superhero movies are either good or they're bad. Like, yeah, but, but I also like in the last one, like I haven't seen. Yeah, Bla- but dude, I, I haven't seen Black Adam, so I can't put a note on that. I haven't seen. Oh, like I said, all the super movies. What super you movies. consider to be underrated, it doesn't have to mean what anybody else thinks. Like if no, you're like, I wonder why that, this didn't get more shine. That is what I think, though. I think you, you think do, that do, they're do, all either good or bad, yeah, and none of them. Ha- you, you think everyone that's done well you thought is good and everyone that hasn't done well you thought is bad? Correct. So you – All the DC movies except the Dark Knight trilogy, bad. Most of the Marvel movies – oh, you know what? Actually, no. I take that back. I think Eternals was not all that terrible. Okay. There it's you a, go. For me, Eternals, like, yeah, there was a lot of extra story. Not the greatest cast of all time, like, for that movie. But I didn't think all in all that it was a terrible movie like everybody else did. Yeah, I, look, man, I, my theory on movies in general is this. If you make a movie and it gets up on the screen, great job. I know how hard it is to get a movie made. So I'm not one of those dudes who's like, I hated the story. If you go to the Incredible Hulk movies and you're like, there was no story, you went to the wrong fucking movie. Do you know what I mean? Like, this isn't my left foot. But he, Yeah, but the Hulk has a story. Yeah, but we're there for the Hulk smash and the CGI. Now, I will say, I think... Yeah, but you can't just have a movie of him running around destroying things. It doesn't make any sense. That's what half the movie is, but you still have to have some sort of a storyline. I it? get it, Like dude. how he I'm became the Hulk and then like him trying to suppress the Hulk and finding love. It's the same thing. Like You have to have some sort of story. You can't just have him running around of blowing course, things up. But I'm just saying it, it doesn't have to be as careful with it. Um, it doesn't have to be as crazy. Like I'm just happy you made a movie. Now I do think they've they could have done better with the Hulks. But for me, the most underrated superhero movie of all time is far and away that very first Fantastic Four. I look, dude. I thought Chris, Chris Evans is a rare dude who has played two different superheroes and crushed them both. His yeah. his Fantastic. 
I never understood. That was such a cool foursome. He was such a good human torch. He was good. Gentleman. Why they never made a second one? Because the oh, with, with that, that cast, cast, I was going to say that, that second they, one was kind of doo doo stew. But wasn't wasn't Miles Teller your twin? Oh, was he Mister Fantastic? No, mm. no, that um, the uh, the guy from the Office, Steve Carell. No, Jim, John Krasinski. That one. He was Mister Fantastic. He was. Yeah. So Miles Teller was was he like the rock, the rock dude? No, there's no way he was Thing. Thing. Maybe. I feel like he would have been Torch. I feel like he would have been the Human Torch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems wonderful. Because, yeah, John Krasinski was that. Because remember in uh, – uh, what's the movie? The, the Scarlet Witch movie? Doctor Strange? Remember the newest Doctor Strange? Have you seen yeah. that movie? Yeah. Yeah, remember when they go to like the, the, the pillar of like there's like the four people that are up there? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. John Krasinski is Mr. Fantastic up there. And then all four of them get fucked. Ah. Yeah. Yo, I gotta tell you, um, I love the Doctor Strange movies too. But so to me, good. That fantastic. I love Benedict Cumberbatch. Dude, Benedict Cumberbatch is one of those dudes. First of all, his name matches his face. Yes, because he does look like a Benedict. No, I just think Benedict Cumberbatch is a real. It's a lot of words and a lot of the ha, la, 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 two la. words. It's a lot of letters. A lot of a lot of like syllable and a lot of blah 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 blah. blah. So there's a lot happening. And I feel like Benedict Cumberbatch is one of those dudes that, from one angle, he's gorgeous looking. And from another angle, you're like, he looks like an alien. And so, like, I think the name Benedict Cumberbatch fits that well because you never – Benedict Cumberbatch feels like the whole You don't know of, if you're going to get Benedict or you're going to get Cumberbatch. Yeah, part of the times he does look like Benedict and some of the times you're like, that is definitely a Cumberbatch. Yeah, exactly. I get that. Benedict Cumberbatch, yeah, dude. Like, there was a, there was a Seinfeld episode where Jerry would – Go out with this girl, and from one angle, he was she was gorgeous, and then the light would hit her in a certain way, and he'd be like, "Yeah." <laughs> and so, like, that's what Benedict Cumberbatch is. Benedict, but but because sometimes he looks like an like a true alien, and sometimes you're like, "That is a handsome fuck." Well, not that often with a handsome fuck. But no, I would I would think I would think uh, he just looks like in one like he looks like a like a, like a handsome a handsome guy. You're right. In the other one, he just looks like a Brit. Yo, Ben. Benedict Cumberbatch also sounds like like a like something out of a Grimm's fairy tale, like a or a Doctor Seuss character. Yeah, the I Benedict to... Cumberbatch. Mm-hmm. Like on a very blustery day, you might find a Benedict Cumberbatch that visits you in an alley. A Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, in a Doctor Seuss book. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. I don't think that's saying works just like your dr seuss analogy didn't work we're both doing things that don't work i think that dr seuss and alley works team you missed, josh you missed a g in there you said or, an alley i just wanted to get to my point hmm. team josh or team jacob does benedict cumberbatch feel like a dr seuss character name i think i'm gonna get a lot more of this by the way i don't know am i Am I that much tanner than you? I'm right next to the big white wall. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when I'm, I'm right next to the big white wall. Yeah, so yeah. When I'm looking, I'm like, is this? I'm tanner than you. You're not tanner than me. I'm out every morning walking the dog. We mean you're tanner than me. Yeah, you put sunscreen on. I don't use sunscreen. That is false. I don't. When we, you have face cream that has sunscreen in. Okay. I, I don't use it in the morning when I walk the dog though. I do want to go out midday, but I don't. Yeah, dude. I listen. I'm 53. I gotta. I gotta cover up. I gotta make sure I don't dry out. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I get it. You know what is interesting, also, dude? Like that we both have our arms crossed, but the opposite way. Huh? Oh yeah. Oh, well, let's get back to New Zealand. Sorry. He jumped off the needle. That's where I had that bone marrow, which was delicious. Yo, oh, yeah, that little – that's where we went next door and you got three pieces of bone marrow and I got that like brisket thing. That, whatever that brisket was was crazy. What was the name of that cookie joint in Auckland? The Cookie Farm. God. It's right next to the Four Points oh, Sheraton God. in downtown Auckland. Might be top three best chocolate chip cookie I've ever had yeah, in my entire life. I'm, I'm not even going to say might be. 
And I and I and the only reason I'm not putting it at one is because I don't remember every chocolate chip cookie I've ever eaten. Correct. Okay. I will say though, the Notre Dame chocolate chip cookie. So like, sorry to back backtrack. When I went to high school, the first high school I went to, Notre Dame, yeah. they had a calf, right? A cafeteria you could go in between classes and grab like a snack or uh, at the first like what used to be recess as kids, but it was like a I think they called it nutrition was what it was mm-hmm. in Notre Dame. They sold like breakfast burritos and all this stuff, right? So I would go in every nutrition at 9.30 in the morning and get two freshly baked chocolate chip cookies. Those are easily in the top three. No joke. High school cafeteria? Yo, I wish I could explain to you how good these cookies were. I can't. Tell there's, me. There's no, there's no words for how much I love those cookies because of how much I hated going to that school. I so those cookies it. were the thing. It was $1.50 for two cookies, and it was the one thing I looked forward to. Every single day. Tell me, and by the way, that was a tough bully time for you, right? Right, which is why I'm saying, like, the one thing I looked forward to was the breakfast burrito. I'll tell you what those cookies cookies were. Disappointing without mentioning names, obviously. It was was disappointing that some of the kids you grew up with didn't stick up for you at that school. Yeah, but it is what it is. They were going through their own stuff, and they were doing their own thing, and they may have been a part of it, but they were just – it's high school, man. They're trying to fit in and get along so that – they weren't me, and I don't blame them. Survival of the fittest. They did what they had to do. Yeah, I don't know. I would have liked to see one of them stand up for you. Oh, I would have loved to have seen it, but guess what? It's not people that are in my life anymore, nor do I want my life because they didn't They didn't do anything for me. Yeah. So, you know, it is what it is, and that's water under the bridge. And if, if it's ever like you see them in public, it's like, hey, nice to see you. How are you? But it's never going to be a let's grab a drink or let's catch up. It's going to be a good to see you in a pass. In a pass because – I just don't give a fuck. I will tell you, and before we get into it, because I want to talk – a couple things I want to talk about, so I'm going to say it out loud so I don't forget. Cafeteria food compared from when you were a year high school to my high school. It varies in high school. Hold on a second. That's why I said your high school to my high school. That's just generational, I'm asking. Oh, oh, Joe generation. Yeah, okay. Um, I want to talk about something we touched on in the car today that I was like, hey, let's save it for the pod. Which is what from my generation do you like, man, I wish I had experienced that or that was part of my childhood or part of my growing up. And I'll kind of tell you what I am envious about yours, right? Okay. Um, finish New Zealand. Uh, and New Zealand. But, you know, I would tell you, you know, one thing that your mom and I really respected that you did is, and we will, again, we won't mention any names, but like, you know, you had that friend uh, should we get into that? That, that were you were you told your friend about this dude? We probably shouldn't. I don't even know what we're talking about. Yeah, we shouldn't get into that. Anywho, um, um, so let's get let's let's yeah, let's not get into that. Okay, let's, let, uh, but the cafeteria. So what at Notre Dame? What were they? So the cafeteria at Notre Dame was like that's the best cafeteria food I've ever seen. I ended up transferring schools. Uh, after my first semester of my junior year and finished somewhere else, um, they didn't have a cafeteria. They just had a singular, singular lunch lady in the kitchen. Her name was Leah. I remember. I used to help at lunch there. Leah was the best. She made great salads. She made great smoothies. What? Um, she only had a limited amount. Uh, but at Notre Dame, like, we would get chicken pesto. We got – like, they had breakfast burritos every morning. Any drink you could think of. Stop right here. Stop right here. Stop right here. So you walk in the cafeteria. It's like you walk up and you order something or there's a cafeteria line. It's all – so you're in a line and they have like you know your regular cafeteria trays if you want to like grab a bunch of things. But it's just like it's all placed out in front of you behind a glass. Cafeteria – the ladies would – lunch ladies would hand it to you. And the lunch ladies were all uh, kids who were going there, their parents, their moms. Oh, so it was, yeah. All right. So I knew – I would know who they were. and they You would, had to pay as you went or it went on a you paid, you paid at the end. There was like – Remember you had to set up an account for me? Yeah. So like there was – it was something like based prison. on – prison. Yeah, it was on your fingerprint. So yeah. you put your, your fingerprint down and it had uh, your account and your balance for how much money you had in that account. And so you could go and what each thing costed. It was like a meal plan kind of. Dude, um, we yeah. had those square pieces of thick – Pizza? Pizza. The cardboard pizza? Oh, we I had that at Milliken. Yeah. I, I remember watching our lunch lady cut it with scissors. That's how I cut my pizza at home. Yeah. So he, we had square – we had like an orange slice, a carton of milk, maybe like two two things of celery. Do you know what I mean? Oh, but, 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 but like something better? Dude, hold on, hold on. The four food groups have changed. 
Like Matt, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But ready, you had a carton of milk. I had a bag. What do you mean? A bag. They gave me a pouched bag of milk in elementary and middle school. A plastic bag of milk. At Carpenter, you had a bag of milk? Yes, sir. And you know what we would do? Didn't I make you lunch at Carpenter? Yeah, but I would – you didn't trade at school lunches? Uh, nobody wanted my – dude, my mom made me – so first of all, my mom would make me – we went bag lunch, right? Yep. But I had bag lunch my entire life. And so my mom would make me two sandwiches, put some chips in a sandwich bag, and like a piece of fruit. And – the, we were poor, and not only that, I grew up in an era where we thought bologna was healthy. Gross. Oh, you bologna never had, is so gross, my man. You never had the bologna. Listen, this, there were the, the, there were lunches where one of my sandwiches was a bologna sandwich on white bread with mayonnaise, maybe some mustard because I like both. Mustard's gross. Okay, just so everybody knows, mustard's gross. The other sandwich would be a tuna fish sandwich. Nope. And she would wrap them in tight plastic. So by the time you unwrapped it, the bread was just a soggy piece. And the tuna juice was everywhere. And so nobody was trading shit with me because I had a bologna sandwich and a soggy tuna sandwich. And my friends, you know, had their – although the, the lunch at my high school was probably pretty terrible. Nobody wanted my soggy ass. That soggy ass, that bread is That's so gross. So gross. It's so disgusting. We never did that to you. No, I stopped. I didn't really like tuna, though. Yo. Canned tuna? Your mom and I made a decent lunch for you. Yeah, I had a good lunch. That's why there was always something in there that I could trade. What What did you trade for? But I forget what our lunches were. It was usually, it was always, it was a turkey, cheese, and mayo sandwich. Or salami. You lo- or salami. This motherfucker. I, for, any of those, for those of you who know Trader Joe's, There is a specific brand of salami there and a specific pack. It's not the pack of salami that's got air in it and it's got that pepper around the salami. No, it's the vacuum sealed type salami packet that's a little spicier than the others. He used to. Boy, I could eat a pack of that in one sitting. I used to. You could. What do you mean you could? They had to limit me. They had to tell me I could only eat half the pack per day because I would come home and just eat the entire pack of salami. He. He would. He was on yep. a seven pack a week diet. He would. He would come home Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Open the pack. Eat that whole fuck. Nothing else. Just a pack of salami. And great whatever, afternoon snack. Pack of salami. And um, he. I finally told Beth. I'm like, we're gonna have to. Just make, you guys gonna, used to limit me on the juice box. You had to limit me on the salami. Dude, I didn't think we were going to have to make a salami limit at any point in time. But salami, salami. is delicious. Yo, you went hard in the paint for that fucking – I do love myself some sliced salami. You got that? Excuse me. We'd pack you chips, right? It was always the barbecue chips from Trader Joe's as well. So those chips were always very delicious and very sought out. Um, but there was never anything sugary in my – Yeah, but we did more than just – that's not true. Wasn't there a fruit roll up or something? No. Did you get a fruit roll up from Trader Joe's? No. no. Um, oh, was, you know what it was? You know what it was? I remember what it was. Chocolate covered pretzels. Yes. Bingo. That was the other thing I got. So, so what was what what was the most tradable thing we packed? Chocolate covered pretzels. And what did you like to get in return? Chocolate milk. So uh, the chocolate covered pretzels were always kind of. Did we what, pack you liquid? Or did we send you with a little more money for liquid? I mean, I've never heard drinks called liquid, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I, high school was a little easier because I had that account, so I could buy a drink if I ever needed a drink. But in middle school, I don't know. Dude, don't we know. had that carton of milk that was lukewarm. I had a bag. I had a legit plastic bagged milk. You know what we used to do? We used to bite off the corner because they were like, oh, yeah, stick a straw on it. Yeah. And so if you had like a table, if you had like one of those typical lunch tables where there were holes in the table and yeah. you went to stab it and you went all the way through, you lost your milk. Yeah. Milk was over. So what we started figuring out was we would hold the bag of milk. We'd bite off a corner and we'd, we'd drink the milk. We'd just squeeze the milk. And then if anybody ever said anything to us, we'd just squirt the milk at them. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So it worked out. But uh, there was also a buddy of mine growing up in middle school 
who always got packed something that I always wanted. So he didn't have it every day, but when he did, we always traded for it. What was it? It was his dad or his mom. I think it was his mom would pack him just a bag of strawberries. But then in that bag of strawberries, the parent would put sugar in it. So it was just, and the, but then the sugar would like, like get it the sounds, strawberry juice in it. And it was sounds amazing. Fucking awesome. So I would trade literally anything for those sugar strawberries. You know, you could have I asked, asked your mom for that. She would have done that for you. Minus the sugar. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. The sugar is the best part. The, Minus sugar the, is, sugar. the sugar is what makes that dish or snack or whatever. It's, yeah, it's a dish, I guess. It's amazing. It was so good. And so I would trade for it anytime I could. And there were some days he'd be like, no, nah, I kind of want it today. And I'd be like, you mother – we had a deal. Well, I'll tell you what, man. This is a good little segue for us be, be, to talk about things from each other's generations or growing up or any of that stuff that we were like, man, I wish I had kind of been able to at least experience that to see what it was like. You know what I think about your generation? Like when I when I try to think of your generation and your childhood, you know what movie I think of? Well, Stand by me. That's you want to see a dead body? That's just what I think your childhood was like. You think we were just walking by the train tracks all the time? Yeah, absolutely. That is, yeah. <laughs> you think that we weren't sta- – well, listen. I will say we had a lot more freedom than you. Yeah, I would have really liked to know what that felt like, being able to just go ride your bike until the sun came down and then have your parents worry about you and then you just show up and be like, oh, hey, I'm here. Also, yeah. how would you keep track of time? I mean, there were clocks when I was growing up. What yeah, do you mean? I, but like, that's what I'm saying. If you did some stand by me kind of shit, like that's what I'm saying. It's like, well, a lot of times, you know, as it was getting dark, you just went home. I guess that's fair. You know? Yep. We, we didn't, you know, when it was getting dark. Here's the thing, dude. I, I, I wonder, and I, I should have asked my parents this, and I still will. Is it that they weren't worried about us? Do you know what I mean? Or, yeah. or it's just how it was. Look, dude, I grew up also – dogs just ran around. You just let your dog out of the house. You know what I'm saying? You just – and then they came back. Would, Indiana would – Indiana would leave. Well, say Indiana, Rocky, they, they, they would. Rock tried to leave at one point. Rocky is not going anywhere. Rock did early on. Remember, he tried to bolt down the driveway a couple times. We couldn't leave the gate open. Yeah, but dude, as he got comfortable, remember the time we thought we lost him and he was just in the garage? Yeah, and I was sprinting <laughs> around. The, yeah. the, or how about that one time where you and I went on a I went to walk to 7 Eleven and grabbed some Swedish fish and he had snuck through the side gate and we came back and he was sitting at, I'm telling you, like sitting on the street hiding behind the trash cans. And we were like, what are you doing? He's just here? waiting for us to get home, man. It's crazy. Um, okay, so you. You you would miss the freedom of us. Yeah, like, yeah. I think I think the one thing I would have liked to have tried is the freedom as a kid. Let's just to get on the bike and go drive yeah. over to your friend's house. Yeah. Be back by, and exactly. not only freedom in that, but freedom in my parents being like, you got to come home right now because they had no way to get in touch with me. Right. It's great. So when you were out of the house, you you were out of the house. Yeah. Like if you were at fifteen, had left the house. Your parents were like, unless you went to your friend's house and they could you call went, that landline and find out if your kid's there. Yeah. You were just gone. Do you know what I mean? Sounds great. Yeah. It, I will say, I think a little more of that would be great. I, but I, we're never going to find that. Today, no, so. no, 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 no. People are too scared. Um, uh, for good reasons. I mean, listen, dude, here's the thing. You, yeah. Yo. Are you yeah. saying people weren't kidnapped when we were growing up? Of course there were. But is it way more probable right now? No, you're just more aware of it. I would I bet more you more. right now that – and I bet you it's more reported now also. But as far as assaults and pedophilia and kidnappings and all that shit, there's more people. So the numbers have probably gone up. But I, I can't imagine that the percentages – I can because, because you're more aware of it. People no, because talk tra- about it all the time. trafficking is way more prominent than it, now than it was when you were a kid. How do you know? How do you know? That? Are you just are you just speaking up? And I don't know if it is or it isn't. I know that it's we're more aware of it. I know there are websites that I can go and log on and see where the pedophiles are near me, which is a terrible website. I still have yet to do it, dude. It's you're it's it, but it, listen, it's great knowledge, but also. 
the more aware of it, the more fear there is, the more fear there is, the more you're scared of it happening. And so I, 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 I will not say out of pocket that this time was more like right now was more dangerous. We were just more naive back then. And so with naive comes a little innocence. And with innocence, you think is like, oh, everything's going to be fine. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, if anything, you're safer because you have cell phones. Do you know what I mean? Like you I could, mean, you could make a phone call. Now look, yeah, unless you, that person takes it or breaks it. Look, look dude, I, I, I am a person that I let you with the friends who were cool. Parents were cool with it. I remember you were 12, man. And I was like, Hey, you were like, we want to go to the park. I'm like, go get on your bike and go to the park. And we had to call your friend's mom. And she wouldn't let you guys go to the park together. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And she was like, are you going? I said, no, I don't want to go to the park. You know what I mean? Which is fair, by the way. We live in a safe neighborhood and all that shit. Yeah. And here's the thing. like, I also remember growing up like that and feeling that was cool to have that kind of independence. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but but it's interesting. I might even look up if it's more dangerous now. You think for sure it is. Not even close. How come you think that? I it, just with everything that we see and we hear about nowadays, and well, you're gonna you're gonna say because we didn't hear about everything that happened when you were a kid. That's fine. You just didn't hear about it. Yeah, that's fine. Because there weren't. You know what I mean? The news yeah, wasn't there. Born in the forties with no television. <laughs> This dude said to me earlier, where I was talking to him about, look, you know what else I miss? I miss mystery. Well, that is so vague. Well, look, man. Is mystery a stripper that you met when you were in college? Like, no, what? That was cinnamon. Yeah. But that, I, that's I, my, that would be my stage. I now come to the stage. Cinnamon. cinnamon. I miss. The thing about my, look, even if you go back to the movies from my generation there was an innocence in a naivete because all the information about everything wasn't available to you at all times wait what was that word you used naivete is that a word yeah i think i mispronounced it or left one syllable oh 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 like naive but with an ity at the end i-t-e I- naivete 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 now that i say it it sounds less and less like a word but i think it is a word sure some of Someone will tell Someone you whether tells. it's a word or not. Yeah, but like, I do miss. Here's the deal. Here's what I think was better in my childhood: the ability to come and go. Yep. And the freedom. Yep. I feel like we were better at interacting with each other because we had to interact with each other face to face. Right. That's how we play. You couldn't call somebody, you just have to show up at their house and be like, hey, can you play? No, dude, but when you play, sometimes you guys are playing like this on a screen together. Yeah. We were doing something. I did that as a kid. Okay. But this is what I think. It was all that. Right. Like we used to get together at night, the kids in the neighborhood and play like Dungeons and Dragons. Kick the, no, kick the can or hide and seek in the neighborhood. You know? Okay. And so all of that, I think, was great. I liked – I'll say this. I think that the TV shows geared towards your age, like YA stuff when yeah. you were younger, mm-hmm. way better. But the movies, you guys didn't have that. We had Breakfast Club, 16 Candles, all this genre of movie that was geared towards us. Fast times. And I, Fast Times future. might have been a little young for me, a little older than I was, but but 80, yeah. 89. Fast Times? Fast Times was 80s. Yeah, but not 89, like early 80s. Really? For sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. It, I don't have my phone on me. Early 80s, too. Back to the Future was 85, and Fast Times was before Back to the Future. But Fast Times might have been early, One early. year was Fast Times at Ridgemont High Bay. Hit me. Oh, yeah, good one. What is it? 82. Yeah. Um, what was an 89 that I'm thinking of, though? I don't know. But I think our movies were better. I will tell you what I wish kind of that I had experienced is dating apps. It's no. just 
Well, I mean, I did. It seems so much when I, because I was never good at approaching women, but I am good via text or online. I, I always got nervous. So I think, I think it would just been also seems so all the parts that I hated about it, it seemed to brush right past. Like I was not good at approaching somebody. Right. But I could reach out online. That doesn't feel like rejection to me. Do you right, know what I mean? Right, right. And so I think I would have liked to have tried them because, you know, I never got a chance to. It just seems like at that age also, like at 21 and single, like if you want to have sex, you could just go on a, an app. Yeah, pretty well, much. That is only specific apps now, though. Whatever, but like you had to go out to the bar and fucking strike out nine times and wait till two a.m. to see if someone was gonna have sex with you. That's true. Whoa, rough you know, time, rough time for you. Yeah, dude, rough time because I was terrible, I'm terrible at it. That's, like that's where I got my game from then. Because I'm the same way. You're terrible at it? Yep. I was always terrible at it. That's why, I like, when I used to go out, when I was single for a brief amount of time, my friends would always be going and trying to talk to girls. And I'd be like, I'm going to just sit here and enjoy my beer. They're like, why don't you ever – and I'm like, no confidence in it, one. And also, I'd rather if, like, it's going to happen, like, I actually run into someone and we have a chat and that's that. But I feel like the randomly approaching women also is, like, scary for them. Yeah. And so I don't want to seem like I'm some sort of creep. Dude, the whole game is crazy to me because they know why you're walking up to them. It's not a secret. You're walking up to them because you are attempting to see if they're interested in having sex with you. Mm -hmm. So you have to find a way to be different than every other dude that's walked up. Correct. And visually, as you're walking up and they see you, you have to pass that test first. Because if they look at you and then they uh, see you walking up and they turn around, it means you should also turn around. Ah, damn, that's rough. Yeah. I was never for that. Um, okay. I think the one – here's a couple of things. I, I, I am not envious. I am and not about social media, and I'll tell you why. I think I would have had a real good time creating shit. You right. Know, you know, I think I would have had a good time doing that kind of goofy shit. Right. I was not, I would not have mentally been able to handle. It's a lot. Social media and watching all these other people's, you know, living lives better than me yeah. and all that shit. Especially, you know, I didn't grow up with much. And so like, I would have been super envious. Um, but I miss the, yeah, the man, the innocence of it. I, I think you guys kind of get fucked. You know, it was better in my childhood than it was in yours too. Huh. The weed, without a doubt, not even close, not even close. So, point one for the Gen Z. I think somebody called me a millennial when we were in Providence, and I was like, "That's really insulting that you think I'm 30." The, well, you know what's crazy is <laughs> most people don't know. They think of millennials in high school, you dumb fucks. People just think of millennials anything younger than that. That's right. I like our music better. Yeah. I like our movies better. What? But what kind of movies? Any of the movies? Yeah, dude. I like our generation movies. You didn't have Tropic Thunder as a kid. I did. If you took – if I took the best 10 movies from my childhood. Wait, define childhood though. From yeah, like 10 to question. 18, from like 0 to 18. Like what, what are we – like we have to pick a time period. Okay. okay. We have to, we'd have to do some research for that. Okay. So next week what we're going to do. Ages, childhood, 10 to 18. We're, we're going 10 to 18. And I'll do 10 to 18. And we'll pick the best 10 movies. Tropic Thunder's already up there. Okay. In my list, 100%. Not even close. Dude, I think. We my, saw that in the theaters. Remember that? Oh, my God. He went. He had to ask multiple friends' parents because the first three said no to letting him take their kid to Tropic Thunder. And they were like, are you crazy? And he was like, what? It's supposed to be a funny movie. And one friend finally said yes. We went and saw Tropic Thunder the weekend it came out in theaters, and I was like 12 or 13. God damn it, that Yo, movie was funny. I still can't. You could never make that movie no today. Way. And and uh, 
Robert Downey uh, Jr. said it too. Like yeah, no, he was like not a chance. But not just a, not for his character too, but Simple Jack. Oh, Simple Jack. You couldn't do Simple Jack either. Now, I still can't believe that you think I grew up on the fucking railroad tracks like Stand By Me. It's just the only thing I can think of. You're old. <laughs> he said to me, we were talking about, because apparently every time. You want to see a dead body? Every time. <laughs> apparently every time the, the song Thriller comes on. Oh, my God. Okay, hold on. Every time this song comes on, this man feels so much nostalgia. He always – it's funny too. He always takes off his hat and he goes, you know, I watched this video for the very first time and I'm like, in the record shop, that was also an arcade. I understand it. Very first color television in your city, I get it. Like it's it's a big deal. Okay, I it understand. Wasn't, it wasn't born in the 40s. It wasn't Pretty the first close. color TV. Pretty close. It wasn't the first color TV. I'm amazed you didn't hear it over the radio for the first time, you – Listen, dude, I listened to a lot of songs over the radio for the first time. Do you know how? Because I didn't have – Yeah, he either does the hands or he touches his beard like he's remembering something. Okay, but by the way, we did go to Backstreet Records, downtown Amherst, Massachusetts. We hovered around this TV, and we watched the premiere of Thriller. What a huge deal. I had just got done playing a video game called Joust. Google it. Fucking Bink. I think I know a lot more games than you think that I, I – Joust. Do you know Joust? I don't think I know Joust, but I know Joust Pole Position. I know Dig Dug. I know Galaga. Dude, that was such a huge, huge deal. Fucking first color TV. I, I He tells me that story every <laughs> single time. He's like thrill you. Every time even I say the word thriller, like that movie was a thriller. And he's like, did you know I watched that video in this record store? I'm like, yes. You tell it the same exact way every single time with the same details. God. It meant something to me. I can tell. <laughs> Might have meant a little too much. Uh, it was so lead. good. I don't even have one of those. Have you ever seen of. the video? Is that a question? The Quite possibly the most viewed music video of all time? I've never seen one. Well, that's not true. I was going to say I haven't seen one Drake video, but I've seen the one where he goes to the Nike. Does he go to the Nike factory? No, he's in his house. That's his house? <laughs> that's that's his house oh. with the basketball court. Yeah, yeah that's his house. Oh. Black leather gloves, no sequin. Yeah. Don't do more than that. They won't be able to air this. Don't do the, the, Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, like they can't hear it as in like they can't play it. Got it, got it. I thought you meant they can't hear me because I'm not singing it loud enough. No, dude. You're singing it plenty loud. That's the problem. Do we go again? No. You sure? Um, I don't want to believe it, dude. Back to the Future. Yeah, that's his house. That's hilarious. Back to the Future, Breakfast Club. Like I'm, you're I'm just gonna go straight from the '80s, aren't you? That's when I grew up, bro. Yeah. You said ten to eighteen. Yeah, I guess that's your age. Yeah, there's. I could. I could pick. You can only pick one Back to the Future. You can't pick all three. I wouldn't pick all. Three. Okay. I think if from your era in just the 80s. I, and, I, and by the way, I'm picking movies. Should I pick movies I saw? I probably saw all of them. So Die Hard was 90s, so that doesn't count. Yeah, dude, don't go. Don't worry about it. I, I could I could pick a lot of movies from the 80s right now. We're gonna do we're gonna do ready for this? Movies. Uh, you want to do albums? It's just we're gonna hit two completely different demographics. They're gonna be and also, most people – well, actually, I don't know. Movies and albums. Okay. Movies and albums from 10 to 18? Yep. <sighs> now, well, I will tell you, me, I, will tell you of, I think albums were going to – might be closer. Let me think of that year for me. So when I was 10 – 2007. Career, what? 2005? I turned 18 in 2015. 1997 is when you were born. Two, that, 10 years from that is 2007. How was I 18? Oh, no, you're right. Wait. Yeah, you're right. 2007. So 2007 to 2015. Which part of the math was were, were you? Don't talk about okay. it. <laughs> don't, don't talk about it. I can leave it alone, man. Just leave it alone. I didn't know if you were going to. Just relax okay. over here, okay? Just relax. Just relax over here. All right. Yeah. Uh, oh, this stop working. The thriller There's part, too. Uh, I get Jacob writing down, getting a little closer to that screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll do. What do you, what do you have in them? 
The thriller one. Yeah. I'm also writing down things. So he's writing things down because we are going to start writing down what we think should be the clips. So, so, so 2007 to 2015, it's mostly, I think, going to be high school for me. That's going to be a four year period of where I just pick high school albums. Yeah. And, and here's because I wasn't thing. really listening to music like that while I was. Actually, that's false. Do you remember when you got me my first iPod and I was listening to pump up music on the way to my basketball games? Yeah. And you guys could hear my music because it was so loud through yeah. my headphones? Yeah. So maybe I take that back. I was listening. I, and I'll say so 10 to 18 for me is um, 1914 to 19. <laughs> Whatever the math is after that, 1914 yeah, to 1922. It's big band, you know, a, lot, a lot of finger wags, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all big band music. Yeah, a lot of finger wagging music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just, dirty, but it's not. All the movies, all the movies are just people saying, "Yeah, I'm gonna see you downtown." So yeah, they, it's all Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. There's no voice in it. It's, it's just all picture. yeah, it's black and white, no talk. Very, very, yeah, very first picture. Movie. Why did they move so fast? I don't know. It Why felt, am I doing it, this? I like, yeah, I don't know. Also, for that, both two questions. We didn't get. We started the podcast with talking New about New Zealand and didn't get to New Zealand. We talked about Auckland, um, about me jumping off that needle, and about the brisket and you having bone marrow. And I love Auckland and the cookie and all that. Shit. Oh, the cookie. That's where we went off. I want that cookie so bad. I will say top three cookie for sure in my lifetime. Oh, um, yeah. Then we get to Notre Dame, and that's how we got all the Yeah, 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 yeah. Good yeah, Lord. Yeah, yeah. That's a long And time. that's how this podcast usually goes. Let me just say, and then we'll just focus in and, and so we can get out of here. The Toronga Show, which was down by the beach, we loved that little beach city. What a great little city. The hike that I took in the morning when you were sleeping is one of the most beautiful hikes I've ever taken in my life. That was also the same day he told me he could fight a bighorn sheep. I think I can still take a bighorn sheep. I, I know you can't. I legit, like, I know that you can't. It's a sheep, right? You don't think Do I can Do you be- know how much force that those things come at you with? They? Do they I, 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 No, 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 no. They ram each other in the head for dominance. Like, together, like that. Do you think I'm going to try to hit it in the head with my head? No, but who says you're going to be able to catch it or restrain it? That- it it's dumb. It's going to run at me. It's going to duck its head. I'm going to I'm gonna do the old okey-doke and get around it. I'm going to get on its back. Do you think you're that agile and then again going to be able to sit on a wild sheep while it's trying to throw you off? You got enough balance for that? You've been on a mechanical bull. I know you don't have enough balance for that. Well, two different things. Not at all. I mean, yes, but a also little sheep. I'm gonna wrap same my. Co- it's not. I'm gonna. A, I'm gonna, dude, wrap, I'm gonna wrap my legs. What makes you think it's little? I'm gonna wrap my legs around it. I'm gonna squeeze, and then it's gonna buck you off, and it's gonna headbutt look you. Squid, look, at, look at this viper grip I've got going on my legs. What the fucking thirteen-year-old girl calves you have on your legs? My calves are a little thin, but I won't. I, I am a skinny man. I have bigger quads than you. No, you don't. We've talked about this. Yeah, but right, I've been in the gym. You don't. Care. We'll measure them later. Just because you've been in the gym doesn't mean you have been. My quads are, are kind of massive right now. Do you want me to pan the camera to your quads? I'm wearing pants. You can tell that they're not massive through your pants. They're massive through my pants. Disagree. Just a fact. Just want you to know. Dude, can we talk about that picture somebody brought to the – I just like – yeah. The fact that like, – okay, so somebody brought him a picture, and they're like, this was the picture that we took with you the last time you were here. They, so they brought two – Printed out, by the way. Two. two. Blown up, right? And Don't one guy me. was like – the guy was like, hey, I got two. One for you to sign. Once you take a look at the picture, I think you're going to want to keep this. Should I just go get the picture? I have it in my bag. Yeah. Go ahead. Keep talking. And I was like, really? Oh, I almost hit my head on that. I go, really? Why? And they were like – the guy was like, you should just take a look. Guys, my Johnson looks so big in this picture. He came up to me and I was like, what's going on? He goes, look. And I was like, oh, congrats. So, so. so I'll just show you the top on, half of it first. Back, back, back it up. So it's a, okay. I'm showing the top half of it first. Okay. Hey, look so, at us. Very, you know, nice and, and, and it's, a, it's a nice photo. What the fuck? You must have been really excited to take that picture. Or, or it was a really good show. i got to tell you, 
Here's what's crazy. Here, can you hand it to me? I, I, I don't want to keep looking as at it, but it's so startling. As me. soon as I yo in the camera, it looks crazy. <laughs> Yo, I, I didn't even see that. Here's on this camera, you can see that from that. You can see that from miles away. What did you put in your fucking Can I tell you something? Jeans. I was Jesus. like, I was like, when I looked at this picture, that is just ridiculous. I was like, ridiculous is right. Ridiculous. I said, I, a lot of I was like, the first thing I was like, good Lord. The guy was like, I know when we saw the picture. He was like, I, I, but honestly, the first thing I thought was, who needs to wear those pants? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you don't have those pants anymore. Oh, I got them. Oh, they're you in, do? I'm going to break them out. They're in the closet. They should stay there. Are you kidding? I mean, I'm not going to wear them on stage. That's seems think, aggressive. Think, yeah, you think mom's really going to be super happy about that? Well, she's had Can't me. Can't do anything about it now. She's had me wear them before. I wonder if she'll be okay with me posting that. That is a hilarious picture. It's ridiculous. It looked crazier on the camera here, too, which was Dude, weird. when he brought it to me. He was like, here's one for you and one for me. And when I signed it for him, I circled my dick. I would have signed it on. I would have, If I were you, I would have signed I it on. I circled it, and then I signed it. Yeah, it's yeah I can't wait. This is like made me laugh, man. It was pretty funny. Must have had a really good show. Like it's, I don't know what prompted that. But it also looks like Write it's daylight. Write this one down, too. But it also looks like it's daylight outside. So It is daylight. It was an early show. Um. All right, listen, guys. Hey, you know what? Now we got to – now, we, you know, you've seen – we got dick pictures of both of us, unfortunately. So, you know, because you found my dick pics and now we got a picture oh, yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just uh, going to write dick Oh, right. I should look at that joke for the night. Are you going to tell it tonight? Maybe. Okay. I uh, hey, can I be honest with you? Yeah. I think you should tell the bachelor party instead. I'm going to do that. Okay. I uh, think like if you're going to bring back one of those, I would do the bachelor party because that one you can do and can tell and it – Kills no matter if they know you or not. Yeah, I, I, I will talk about it after this. Yeah, uh, I haven't told. I want to tell either the porn story, or the dick pic story. I haven't told it either one of those. And yeah, but then if you bring me up, oh, because no one's gonna know about the porn story, right? Right. Unless they know who you are. Already. Right. 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 We'll, we'll, we'll find out. I think the porn story is a good one to tell. Um. So listen, uh, we didn't get to the other two cities in New Zealand. Which were Christchurch, Christ which again we were there for a day. Great shows. They yeah. had a floating car water fountain. Yeah. And an that intense is. amount of seagulls. Yes. Oh, also the angriest here the angriest sounding bird in Auckland. Yeah, without a doubt. Yep. Without um, a doubt. Christchurch was awesome though. We had a, it was a cool little theater. Um, I, I'm gonna go on record thinking I can take the big horn sheep. You go on record whatever you want. Didn't a wildlife pres preservationist message you and be like, sir, you are indeed wrong? Yeah, but what do they know? More than you. Okay. Um, I, I don't even know what the argument is there. Like, by the way, he had two people agree with him. Everybody else agreed with me. I just want everybody to know that for the record. That's true. So there's that. And then we ended in Wellington. Oof, love it. Yeah, what did we eat there? We we got it. I oh, have, you ordered a hundred olives in Christchurch, <laughs> dude. Ordered a legit side of olives and then got another bowl of olives with his charcuterie board. I didn't know himself. the bowl of our olives olives was coming with the charcuterie board. But he we, got a bowl of olives with his bowl of olives. It was pretty nice. Shout out, uh, Heath, to Heath, my man. I mean, I don't think he's listening to our podcast. He's definitely not. But shout out my man Heath. Listen, dude, that guy Heath is the dude who books us in New Zealand. Uh, also, Andy. Yep. Um, from but, Live Nation. But, but Heath but drove us from Auckland to Taronga. To Taronga, and then he was with us on each plane ride from uh, from Taronga to Christchurch, Christchurch to Wellington. He was up. At the ass crack of dawn, making sure we got into our car, we got on our flight. Like, but also such a good but, dude. Man. Yeah, such a so much fun. Like to be around, to have a, a genuine conversation with. He's a Newcastle fan. Come on, you magpies! I, um, I wish I knew the yeah. name of his business, his booking business. But yeah, you you're the one who was supposed to know that. So. I don't know. Um, but we had look New Zealand, Australia, amazing. And guys, look. I'm trying to think of what we if you are in, in Wellington? 
Oh, oh, you had that butter chicken and I had that those dumplings at your show. Yeah, that butter chicken made me. And then that Yeah. I got a I got beef and kimchi dumplings. I've been eating a lot of kimchi recently. Love it. So good. Oh, all right. That kimchi fried rice I had in the airport. Fire. Yo. That was that was out of Dude, you Melbourne. ate 37 sandwiches on the flight back from Yo. <laughs> On the way back to the States, I have never been hungrier. I don't know how to explain it. And no, I wasn't hot because I didn't have anything on me because we were in a country where I'm not allowed to have it. So I am sitting on this plane. It is a 15-hour ride home. And I'm sitting there. I pretty much did on the second flight what he did on the first flight. He slept more on the second flight. I watched yeah. all three of the Fantastic Beasts movies. Great, by the way. Loved them. Um and when she came around with our last snack for the night and for the flight, and he was he was knocked out. She goes, so it's like a Reuben toasty. And I was like, great. And she goes, and for him, he, I go, he'll have the Reuben toasty as well, but I'm going to eat it. And she was like, okay. And no joke, he was asleep for maybe 13 minutes. I ate both of those toasties and the sides in less than 10. And then woke up and was like, yeah, they're serving snack. And they were like, he was like, I already ate yours. So yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I took that. That's because you because you took mine on the first flight also. So we, you know we just traded. Yeah, 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 and you're absolutely. not eating the Reuben toasty. No, but I did. By the way, and then we're gonna get out of here. But tell me, how did you feel? Because when he came on the road with me, the rule was he had to work out with me. No sugar, no gluten, and you had to get up pretty early. How did that feel? All that feel for God? terrible. It was all right. I mean, I will say, look, the diet he is on is difficult. But it also opens the door for me to order more expensive things because the more expensive things don't have bread and they're just pieces of meat. So I got to order a steak everywhere I went because, oh, it fits the diet. So, by the way, which, not, by the way, not a bad move. So I was pretty happy about that. By the way, you can eat a steak wherever we go anyways. I don't well, care. Yeah, I know. You know, I, I, I remember the rule when I was growing up with you guys. We didn't go to expensive places because mm -hmm. I couldn't afford it. Right. But – I always hated going out as a kid and, and hearing, oh, you, you can't have these two things. Don't limit the menu for me. I always hated that. So wherever we went, it was always like, if it's on the menu, you can order it. I won't take you somewhere where we can't afford something. And I'll take one of everything. You did. All right, listen, guys, please download, rate, subscribe, especially on iTunes. It means so much to us. But leave a message, a comment, wherever you're listening or yep. watching. Are we on Spotify too? Yep. It, it is a huge deal if you can do that for us. Tell your friends. Um, Tell your friends. Jacob and I would both love to uh, blow this pot up. So maybe we could, you know, spend time at home one more week a month. I'm getting yeah, sick. And I'm tired. Yay! Other than that, come see us on the road. The shows have been amazing. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. Um and Josh Wolf comedy on all socials. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram and it's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Um, yeah, that's that's it. Oh, and um, yeah, come have some fun with us and do something good for somebody. Yeah, that's tell somebody it. you love them. I like that one too. Hold on, how do I do that? It is an escape. And record. I like how you're frozen. Yeah, I'm trying to keep the the picture for the end. I'm going to do the same thing. End recording? You hit another button after two minutes, you know. I do. I'll hit it again. Yep.